my kickboxing coach used to say to me, I used to come in the gym, he said, what do you hate the most? I said, what do you hate the most? He said, okay, don't know. He said, why? He said, whatever you hate, why? He said, whatever you hate, And that's what life's about. You're not going to be able to go through life avoiding pain and also becoming a man or a woman. You're going to have to be that guy who's been through so much shit that he can wake up and go, this ain't nothing. This, this ain't nothing compared to back then. This ain't nothing compared to that time. You know, and if you're not going to be that guy, then you're going to always suffer the consequences of not being that guy. There's pain to become important. There's pain in not being important. We live in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'll tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul, and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man, and that man would sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. Starkly work. Start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky. All these men are out here complaining, complaining that things are difficult. The reason it has value is because it has value. If it was easy, everyone would have it, and it wouldn't have any value. The fact that it's hard to do is the reason it has a value in the first place. How are you going to complain that it's hard to be the man, but then also understand that being the man has value? They are linked. You cannot separate the two. It's a logic fail. It's a logic. If you love the fact, if you love the idea of being that character you dream of yourself to be, then you should love the fact that it's hard to become that man. Because it means no one else can do it. I, this is what I love. I love everything about my life. I know the shit I've been through to become who I am. And I wouldn't trade a second of it. There's a whole generation of men who have been raised without being prepared for war. Because that's what life is. It's a war for resources. It's a war for females. It's a war for attention. It's a war for domination. It's war. And as a man, you have to establish yourself in a hierarchy of men. There is a global hierarchy of men. And there are men out there right now who are growing every day and they're seven foot two NBA players made of muscle and that's life and there's men out there who are five foot five and not but that doesn't make a difference you still have to find a way to fight and compete if you don't make yourself valuable you have no value you have to get up and do it this is how life works, right? If you even let's say, let's take cars, you're driving at 200 miles an hour. You don't feel it. It's accelerating to 200 miles. An hour. You don't feel once you're doing speed. You feel the acceleration. It's the acceleration that's exciting. You need you need to feel the change in your life to benefit. From your life. Most of the time, you don't feel like doing the things you're supposed to do. But the true masculine frame throughout history was doing the things they didn't want to do, but they knew they had to do because they had honor and duty. That's what honor and duty means. Do you think the men on the Titanic wanted to stay on the fucking Titanic? No! We're men. We have to stay. We're scared, but we must. It's our duty. It's on the other side of fear that you're going to garner the respect of other individuals. You have to do things that they're afraid to do, meaning most likely you are also afraid. I've done a bunch of shit. I was afraid. I was afraid 87 times before I got in the ring cage. It's scary. I lived a scary life, but by going through all of that, I am now respected. You have to learn to face your fear. I'm not saying not be afraid. Because that's not great. If you do something, you're not afraid, you're not brave. You have to be afraid and do it anyway. That's what courage is. So I'm not saying you can be as scared as you want, but you still have to go. You're not going to have a, a big life that's a calm ocean. You need to learn to just surf the waves and laugh. Because most people just collapse under the pressure. Stress tolerance is a massive indicator of how successful you will be. When you're young, go out there and get, get stressed, get upset. Have those sleepless nights. You should be 17, 18, you should be panicking. And that's going to give you a stress tolerance level that allows you to grow into an adult and to handle a big life. The only thing you can actually really truly control is what you think. So why are you not controlling your own mind? Sure, it's your asset. It's your ally. It's your friend. Why would you make an enemy out of the only thing you have control of? I refuse to do that. It doesn't make sense to me. You don't even need to be brave enough to become brave by yourself. You need to be around men who are already brave. Everyone else around you, when you say you feel a certain way, if they don't check you, then why are you hanging around with them? When men get together, there's a magical force that makes us feel brave, makes us feel powerful. So when I talk to these dudes, like, oh, but it's, you know what, Tate? Yeah, I agree, but you know it's hard. It's hard. Of course it is. It's supposed to be. And if you're not cut out for it, then, then fuck off and live a normal existence and die. Let other men enjoy the spoils of being a man and fucking die. If that's what you want to do, just sit there and exist, fade into history, unremembered. That's your decision. Name is a single attribute for masculinity. It's going to come from a place other than trauma. I talk about this all the time. People say, I've had a traumatic life. I say, well, then you're very, very fortunate. You had a traumatic life, and you may have misused it.
that like you may have displaced it. You may have accepted the you may have been the novel excuse to fail, as opposed to really it broke. But every single man of value went through trauma, and they went through pain. It's going to be painful to get strong, it's going to be painful to get rich, painful to become important, it's going to be painful to become good with women, the heart's going to get broken a bunch of times. You have to be prepared for pain. If you're not ready for pain, you're never going to be in pain. This is down to you. This is down to listen. You may be feel fired up for 10 minutes after this little talk. You're not going to feel fired up forever. You need to get system in place. You need to discipline. You need to get an atmosphere of people around you who are here to be accountable. And not make it easy for you to keep you be a fucking nobody. And then you're going to fix your life. Otherwise, you're going to stay nobody. Otherwise, you're going to stay nobody. That's your problem. That ain't mine. That's your problem. What you can't do is devalue yourself or your attention in any way. What, what happens now in the modern world is that men's attention no longer has value. In the 1950s and 60s, if a girl got the attention of a good-looking guy, it, mean, it meant something. Because how many times can she get the attention of a good-looking guy? She walks down the street, whatever. In the world of Instagram and Facebook and social media, a girl's getting blown up. So what, what does your attention have? Your attention has no value. So the, the way you give it value is one, becoming a higher value man. But another way you have to make sure your attention has value is you don't throw it away. Because it suffers from inflation like anything else. And this is how you end up with guys who are buying presents, taking girls on holiday, doing everything for them. But their attention is so low value that it means less than one text from me after three months. Being smart, being witty, all these things help. But this is the reality of life as a man is that you have to build your value. And people say to me all the time, oh yeah, take and get girls. I said, I got girls because I became a kickboxing world champion. That's thousands of hours in the gym. I, didn't, I wasn't born with some magic. I mean, I wasn't born with some tool. You know, it's like, you know, I had to do it myself. So you have to build it as a man. This is just the unfortunate reality. If you're, if you're not prepared to do any work at all, you're going to suck. So you can't hack. You can't hack having a personality. You can't trick a girl into thinking you're something or not. If you want a woman to really respect you, then be a man worthy of respect. It, it, it's really that simple. And on top of that, one of the easiest ways to be a man worthy of respect is to refuse to take disrespect. You can be nice to me. You can be nice to me. The idea of being nice in another side has no value. Because nice is something that's tangible. Nice is something that can be found. Nice. Mm. Who are like to go out there and be nice? Mm. We can be nice to people we don't like. Anybody can be nice. Anybody can. So if there's no scar if there's no scarcity in that trap man about it. Something like status is very hard to think. Right? Something like that landlord is very hard to think. All these things are very hard to fake, but nice can be fake. But the point is, when a guy comes along trying to be nice, I think women instinctively kind of look at me and go, look, you just met me. You don't know me. You just met me. And you're being extremely nice to me. And that, to a degree, I think you're that's, saying. That's, that's deceptive on some level. I think that's the reason the seminar was false for us. Because you knew me an hour ago and you were nice to me. What do you want? Well, we know what we want. She knows what we know. Yeah. So the whole thing just looks fake. It doesn't look genuine. And integrity and, and being a genuine person is not just something that women respect and men. It's not something that people respect and other people respect. So it's good when a woman meets you and she knows you're a genuine individual. Nice guy. There's a huge advantage in life. Huge advantage in life. That is a skill that most people should cultivate. Being like In the real world, the people who dislike me are people I've decided is okay for my society. Or pure violent haters who are really good, right? But if I'm in a conversation with somebody and I want them to like me, I have 100% success rate. I know how to make people like me. I know how to be a likable person. The only resource you have is your attention. And the reason it's so difficult is because now when you get so much attention for no reason, then why does your attention matter? You just put value on your attention. So then how do you put value on your attention? What did we talk earlier about how trauma can mold you? Trauma can be a fantastic thing. Heartbreak, depression, sadness, these are all fantastic motivators. You're just, I'm telling you why they're a fantastic motivator. When you go to a guy that's heartbroken, he has all the motivation in the world to bring the next resolution. He has the motivation, he's putting it in the wrong place. That's 300 cold emails you can send. It's a business. A lot of money you could have made. Yeah. So life's going to hurt you, and how you use that pain is completely not yeah. You can use that pain to galvanize yourself. That's the only better man you've ever been. I'm not saying that I'm only successful because of some shit. I'm saying that every single time that I was heartbroken, I never wasted it. I never wallowed it. That's what I'm saying. True trauma's going to come, pain's going to come, you have to use that construct. I'm not telling you to tell him to avoid the pain. I'm saying that when it comes, make sure it's used in a constructive way. And, and still to this day, that's all I would end. Still to this day, if something bad happened to me and I got really upset, I would find the most constructive possible outcome. So that's a conscious decision. So you have to have the emotional control to make a conscious decision. But I think another side of it is you just need to be also, you need to be uncompromising. And you need to be uncompromising in a very positive way. So I, like I always say to people, I've never been 
in the friend zone in my life. And the reason I've never been in the friend zone in my life is because I'm very clear about my intentions. Mm-hmm. I think of you as a I think oh, we're friends. Well, no, we're not, though. Are you coming on a date with me? No, okay, good, goodbye. And I think that a lot of the biggest mistakes guys make is they, they don't believe they can be affirmative as a man without coming across as an asshole or coming across as a jerk or coming across creepy. You can just be affirmative with who you are and be confident with who you are and be clear about your intentions and you'll be fine. So don't be trying to. Now, the reason I get away with such little work is because I put such a high price tag on myself. I am a four time kickboxing world champion. Multi- so even even any female, no matter how beautiful, no knows, I'm never going to be the guy hitting her up. I'm not going to be the guy she can call and I'll always ask. Her. I'm not going to be the dude who will give her lips to work. She knows I got shit going. She knows I got. Remember what I was saying earlier about how I've never struggled with females because I never focused on the females. There's other game built bruise all these idiots. Worry about yourself. Get yourself straight. When your own shit straight, put yourself together. Females are an added bonus. You go up to a thousand girls, you get five phone numbers and one might forgive you. Yeah, I'm sure that's absolutely true. But so? You're going to spend your life instead of becoming rich, instead of becoming strong, instead of becoming smart, you're just going to run around a mall, approaching girls, day game. It's garbage. It's for children. All that is for children. I focused on myself, and that's how I managed to attain the highest quality female. And also not attain, retain. And sometimes that's difficult. Let me tell you something. She might be talking to a real G. But she's talking to me. You're going to struggle to make her like you more. It's true. I have more tangible assets. More physical, financial, and mental assets. Plus I know the game. Sometimes you're outclassed. Sometimes that's how it goes. Sometimes you're just outclassed. That's how it goes. It's another thing you can't really control. But what you can control in those situations is that you don't make her lose respect for you. Keep your honor about it. If you're going to lose the game, there's two ways to lose it. With honor and without honor. With honor and without honor. So you have to have a system in place that's going to allow you to escalate and elevate your conversation and elevate and escalate your relationship and her interest level in you. If you're going to sit there and just message girls, you might be on lockdown for the next six weeks. How about you? Every day. How are you? Fine, you, what are you doing? Oh, you, oh. So you got, you got to have a little bit more strategy than that, you know what I mean? But then, you have to understand, you're always in competition with other dudes. If a girl is messaging you, she's messaging 20. So why does she like you and not the rest? I mean, it's not easy as a man now, but it's really not easy as a man. It's getting harder and harder. I'm not saying that you, you can't get hot girls. I'm just saying that the hot girls are certainly aware of their worth. And Instagram gives them unlimited data. Like, yeah. One of my girls has 69 followers on Instagram. Her Instagram account's on my phone, so I can see any time. And she gets a message every she gets a message every six minutes, maybe. And she had messages from verified NFL stars, Chicago Bulls, all this. So like, if you're a hot girl, like if you ever feel lonely, you click your Instagram inbox, you scroll through, and you decide who you want to reply to. Like these girls are never lonely, and they're never not talking to someone. And this is the element that most men forget, and this is something I try and drive home in the PhD course. The reason it's so hard for a man is you're not trying to make her like you. You're trying to make her like you more than she likes the guy she was talking to before you. So you're always in competition all the time. And the competition as a man is near unlimited. That's something you have to keep in mind. You have to be on the ball and you have to be ruthless with it. You've got to have your game in check. And, and, and you can get to a point where if you're really smooth with it, it gets easy.